és a horvát népet sok évszázados jó kapcsolat köti össze. A Laudes főcelebránsa Jossi Kozanics bíboros, zágrábi érsek, 2016. augusztus 20-án a Szent István bazilika előtt megtartott ünnepségen, a zsúfolásig megtelt téren Magyarország és Horvátország közös megpróbáltatásairól beszélt. Felidézte a kommunizmus időszakát, hozzátéve, hogy nem csak a szenvedésben, hanem az értékekben és a szentek tanúságtételében is osztozik a két nép. A tavalyi évben földrengések rázták meg Horvátországot, amely a járványhelyzet mellett újabb kihívás elé állította az ott élőket. Magyarország a katolikus karitás közreműködésével segítette a katasztrófa miatt otthon nélkül maradt embereket. A kongresszus szimbólumán a missziós kereszten ott van boldog Aloysius Tepinácsbök erekjéje, aki jelen volt az 1938-as budapesti eucharisztikus kongresszuson. Mincenti József bíboros kortársa és sorstársa volt. Boldog Stepinács jól egyesíti alakjában az egész tragédiát, amely a horvát népet és Európát sújtotta a 20. században, a gonosz három nagy csapás, a fasizmus, a nácizmus és a kommunizmus által. Zenei szolgálatot nyújt a Pannonhalmi Bencés közösség. The, uh, the, musical, sir, the musical ministry will be uh, conveyed by uh, the uh, Benedictine uh, commun uh, community of Pannonhalma. Uh, the, uh, they come from a cloister uh, which is more than uh, 1,000 year old. Uh, Their, uh, their uh, motto is Ora et Labora, which is the motto of uh, Saint Benedictine. It means uh, work, uh, pray, work, pray and work. In the, this uh, spirituality, the liturgy is uh, highlighted. Um, in the psalm, the, the psalm is important, uh, which is uh, done several times a day in the, the uh, cloister. It serves their, uh, the deepening of their faith and deepening of their, uh, the cohesion of their community. Uh, the, uh, the motto of the Benedictines is Ut omnibus glorifil de Deus, which means that we praise God in everything. Uh, we, uh, so please um, join the, the loudest, uh, which will be held by the, um, the, the singing of the Benediction uh, community. Have a nice day.
from my sin. My offense is truly, I know them. My sin is always before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned? What is evil in your sight I have done? That you may be justified when you give sentence and be without reproach when you judge. Oh, see, in guilt I was born. A sinner was I conceived. Indeed, you love truth in the heart. When in the secret of my heart teach me wisdom, who oh, purify me 
then I shall be clean. You will wash me, I shall be whiter than snow. Make me here rejoicing and gladness that the bones you have crushed may thrill. From my sins turn away your face and blot out all my guilt. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Don't cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me. that I may teach transgressors your ways and sinners may return to you. O oh, rescue me, God, my helper, and my tongue shall ring out your goodness. O oh Lord, open my lips and my mouth shall declare your praise. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice a contrite spirit, a, a humbled, contrite heart you will not spurn. In your goodness show favor to Zion. Rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Then you will be pleased with lawful sacrifice, holocausts offered on your altar. <coughs> Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. You alone I grieve by my sin. Have Pity on me, O oh Lord. Offenses, Lord, for we have sinned against you. Let my eyes stream with tears, day and night without rest. Over the great destruction which overwhelms the virgin daughter of my people, over her incurable wound. If I walk out into the field, look those slain by the sword. If I enter the city, 
look those consumed by hunger. Even the prophet and the priest for, for age in a land they know not. Have you cast Judah off completely? Is Zion loathsome to you? Why have you struck us a blow that cannot be healed? We wait for peace to no avail. For a time of healing but terror comes instead. We recognize, O oh Lord, our wickedness, the guilt of our fathers, that we have sinned against you. For your name's sake, spurn us not, disgrace not the throne of your glory. Remember your covenant with us and break it not. Glory to the Father and to the Son. and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Amen Truly we know our offenses Lord for we have sinned against you. And we praise you, our God. <clears throat> the Lord is God. We are his people, the flock he shepherds. We give you thank, thank Lord. Cry out with joy to the Lord, all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing for joy. Know that he, the Lord, is God. He made us, we belong to him. We are his people, the sheep of his flock. Go within his gates giving thanks. Enter in courts, enter his courts with songs of praise. Give thanks to him and bless his name. Indeed, how good is the Lord, eternal his merciful love. He is faithful from age to age. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning is now and will be forever Amen The Lord is God. We are his people, 
the flock, his shepherds. We give you thanks, O Lord. We praise you, Lord. I will rather boast most gladly of my weaknesses in order that the power of Christ may dwell in with me. Therefore, I am content with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and constraints for the sake of Christ. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Your Eminences and Excellencies, Reverend Fathers, Venerable Brothers, Deacons, Dear Sisters and Brothers in Christ, this morning's short reading in the Liturgy of Hours introduces us to the logic of God the logic that turns our habitual fixed ideas upside down and which culminates in the mystery of the cross. This is the path trans traversed by the incarnate word which St. Paul in his first letter to the Corinthians puts in the, these words. But God has chosen what is foolish in the eyes of the world to shame the wise, and what is weak in the eyes of the world to shame the strong, and what is low and despised in the eyes of the world, God has chosen those who appear to be nothing to destroy those who appear to be something. Thus, no one can boast before God. The Apostle Paul thus boasts not only of his own works, but of Christ's power in human weakness. In this way, he expresses the paradox of the way in which divine power and saving power are perfectly revealed in weakness. When I am weak, then I am strong. Dear brothers and sisters, many times in scripture it is the weak and small who recognize God and are able to follow him. There are many stories in both the Old and New Testaments in which poverty and weakness are the opportunities for God to reveal himself. We see it, for example, when Elijah enters the wilderness, sits down verily, and wishes he were dead. But we also see it when weary crowds follow Jesus for days. And then the Lord himself provides them with food 
and gives them strength to continue their journey. In the Bible, the small and the weak are those who trust in God in all circumstances and are able to find ref refuge in his strength. They are the ones who, like the blessed Virgin Mary, can chant more powerfully than anyone, anyone else the words of the psalm, all my springs are in you. As our Pope Francis says, the Eucharist, although it is the fullness of the sacramental life, it's not a reward for the perfect, but a generous medicine and nourishment for the weak. Dear participants who are present here in the International Eucharistic Congress in Budapest in 2021. Blessed Aloysia Stepanik, martyr Archbishop of Zagreb, at the 1938 Eucharistic Congress in Budapest, faced with the ever more real threat of war, reminded us faithful that in these terrible days, as I quote, in these terrible days which humanity is experiencing, we must believe firmly, more firmly than ever, that there is indeed an almighty love capable of uniting all the peoples of the earth in one great and happy family. And that is the love of Christ in, in the Most Holy Eucharist. It is this faith in this almighty love that unites us today, whatever part of the world we, came, we come from. The Holy Eucharist is the golden door of love that unites man to God. This golden clasp that unites individuals, separate families, peoples, and nations. We Catholics believe in this. We believe, and that is why we can repeat with faith the words of Saint Joel the Apostle, Nos creditimius caritati quam Deus habet in nobis, which means we believe in the love that God has for us. That's what was said by Al uh, martyr Al Aloysia Stepanich, uh, martyr archbishop, whose relics are here in, on, in the, on this uh, wonderful cross. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if we also acknowledge our smallness and our fragility before God, we'll find in Jesus Christ the source of Christian life. He gives himself to us, knows our fragility, and becomes nourishment for us on our journey. The Eucharist is the source of our life. The Eucharist is the power of love. Amen.
taníts, hogy akaratod kövessen, mert Istenemnek vallak téged. Taníts, hogy akaratod kövessen, And they break be merciful to me. Make known to me the path that I must walk. Be merciful to me. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit. At daybreak, be merciful to me. has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Savior, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. Through his holy prophets, he promised of old that he would save us from our enemies, from the hands of all who hate us. He promised to show mercy to our fathers and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath he swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies. Free to worship him without fear. Holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. Holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. You, my child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation, by the forgiveness of their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us. To shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen.
the Lord has come to his people and set them free. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. He has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty savior, born of the house of his servant, David. Raising our eyes to Christ, who was born and died and rose again for his people, let us cry out. Blessed are you, Jesus, Redeemer of mankind. You did not hesitate to undergo your passion and death to redeem us by your precious blood. You promised that you would provide living water, the fountain of eternal life. Pour forth your spirit upon all people. You send disciples to preach the gospel to all nations. Help them to extend the victory of your cross. You have given the sick and the suffering a share in your cross. Give them patience and strength. Salutaribus moniti, et divina institutione formati, audimus dicere. Oh, oh, oh. 
Donaci, O Padre Bono, Father, all-powerful, let your radiance down in our lives, that we may walk in the light of your love with you as our leader. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, once God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Encourage one another, brothers and sisters. Live in harmony and peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon you and remain with you forever. Amen.